Y'all, this is our last video in the 8th grade science series. It ends with Earth and Space Science, and we'll talk about how we, as humans, impact our environment. So, it's been a pleasure learning with you, and keep it up. You can do it, but always remember, you've got it, and science rocks. All right, get out that science notebook, get ready to take some notes and draw pictures as you follow along. So go ahead and copy down these 17 vocab words. They go in ABC order like this. And just come back later and create your own definition of these words. So go ahead and pause if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. All right, we are going to talk about the human environmental impact. So humans depend on the resources and geochemical cycles of Earth to provide clean water, breathable air, and soil that is capable of supporting crops. So human activities, including the consumption of resources, population growth, and technology, affect the cycles and processes of the Earth. Okie dokie, resources. There are two main types of resources, non-renewable resources and renewable resources. So non-renewable resources are used up faster than they can be produced. So fossil fuels, including oil and coal, are examples of non-renewable resources. So because it takes thousands of years to form them. And rocks, minerals, metals, and ores are other examples of non-renewable resources. So renewable resources can be produced at about the same rate as they are consumed. So water, lumber, food, these are all examples of renewable resources. So renewable resources do have factors that limit their production. Um... For example, even though tomatoes and other crop plants are renewable resources, their production is limited by the availability of fertile soil, solar energy, and water. All right, let's look at these geochemical cycles. So living organisms need certain substances in order to survive. All right, oxygen, carbon, Water and nitrogen are some of the essential substances that living organisms need. So these substances are cycled through geochemical cycles, including the carbon-oxygen cycle, okay, the water cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. So humans depend on geochemical cycles to provide clean water, breathable air and soil that is capable of supporting crops. So human activities can affect these cycles. All right, human populations worldwide have grown exponentially over time. So this growth has had a significant impact on the world around us. There is a limited supply of resources available on Earth. So as population sizes increase, there may not be enough resources to meet their needs demands. So reusing and recycling products can help reduce the consumption of resources. So although there are processes being used to control the disposal of waste products, as population sizes increase, more waste may be produced than can be managed effectively. So although three-fourths of the earth is covered with water, not all of that water is pure enough to be consumed, and water may not always be immediately available to areas that are geographically landlocked. So as populations increase in size, more land is needed to build shelters in which organisms can live. So however, by using more land for shelter, less land is available to plant crops and to raise livestock, such as cattle and pigs and sheep. So even furthermore, when humans cut down trees to build shelters, the deforestation 
increases the amount of carbon dioxide and reduces the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. So urbanization produces large areas of concrete that tend to heat um, island, if tend to a um, heat island effect. So concrete absorbs and releases heat much more quickly than Earth's natural surface. So this causes high temperatures to occur in urban areas. Okay, technology. There's pros and cons. There's benefits and negative effects of technology. So let's look at some benefits here, some pros of technology. Advances in agriculture practices like crop rotation and advances in tools like seed drills have improved our ability to grow crops, conserve fertile soil, and reduce soil erosion. So that's good. Okay, another advantage uh, or benefit or pro of technology, advances in industrial technology have improved manufacturing processes and global and domestic communication and transportation. So that's good. But there's some negative effects of technology, some cons. Farm machinery Industrial factories and modern forms of transportation consume non-renewable resources and may contribute to erosion, to pollution, the depletion of the ozone layer, and the production of acid rain. So that's not good. Um, another one, fertilizers, pesticides, and other agricultural chemicals can alter the composition of soil and affect those geochemical cycles we were looking at, all right? Um, also, industrial wastes are um, difficult to dispose. Things like old batteries, outdated computers, industrial wastes, they're difficult to dispose. All right, let's look at the history of U.S. energy consumption. So as the human population continues to grow, the amount of resources it consumes also grows. So resource consumption can also increase as per capita consumption increases. So the history of energy resource consumption in the U.S. provides an example of this trend. So look at this graph. The graph shows the history of energy consumption in the U.S., okay? So it's starting at 1775, and it goes to a little bit after the year 2000, all right? So one of the striking trends that is visible in this graph is the total amount of energy used, okay? I mean, holy moly, as the population of the country has increased more people have required more energy, all right? In addition, the amount of energy each person uses has also significantly increased. There are many natural processes that can cause changes to the environment. Each natural process poses a unique set of hazards to humans and to the environment. So some natural hazards have predictable warning signs that indicate they are about to occur, while others occur unpredictably. So you've got natural disasters like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, droughts and wildfires, tornadoes, hurricanes, and floods. All right, guys, make sure to take time to watch these three videos and take more notes. Enjoy. All right, our last round of practice questions for eighth grade science. Let's look at number one. An increasing number of human populations are gaining access to electricity and automobiles. As these numbers continue to increase, the worldwide consumption of major energy resources, including coal and oil, will most likely continue to increase as well. So considering the information above, which of the following statements about humans and energy resource consumption is most likely true? All right, so pause it, look this over, and see what you think. 
So per capita energy resource consumption is increasing worldwide. Unless these trends change or new technologies are engineered to alter the environmental effects of their consumption, the environmental impacts caused by the use of coal and oil will increase. So if we're using up all the coal and oil, the environmental impacts caused by the use of coal and oil will also increase. So we're going to go with D. Number two, the world map below shows the locations of tectonic plate boundaries. All right, let's look at the black lines. And so here's the tectonic plate boundaries and the active volcanoes, which are the red dots. Okay, all these little red dots are the active volcanoes. So based on this map, volcanoes most commonly form. Now pause it and see what you think. All right, looks like volcanoes most commonly form near tectonic plate boundaries. All right, look at the black lines with their tectonic plate boundaries and notice that's where you find most of the little red dots indicating a volcano. So the pattern is especially pronounced along the boundaries of the Pacific Plate where it is called the Ring of Fire. All right, you can see the Ring of Fire. So we are going to go with A, near tectonic plate boundaries. Number three, in general, as the human population increases, which of the following is true? So pause it and see what you think. So as human populations increase, it becomes more and more important to manage the Earth's resources very carefully. So the amount of resources used by people will increase. If the population is going to increase, the amount of resources used by people will increase. But in most cases, the amount of resources available on Earth doesn't necessarily change. So we are going to go with B. All right, let's look at number four, a lot of graphs. So just a reminder, when you're doing this um, eighth grade science test, take your time, okay? It's not a race. Take your time. Make sure to read over the question. Look at everything about each graph. Um, remember, you'll be answering questions in clusters a lot of time when you'll get a bunch of information, a few graphs, and then you'll be asked maybe three multiple choice questions over that same information. So it's important to um, relax, take a deep breath, take your time, and um, it's worth it just to try your hardest. So let's look at number four. A city has conducted a research project to determine how much solid waste it has been putting into its landfill each of the past five years. The results of the research are summarized in the graph um, actually right here. Okay, solid waste per year. So we've got the years along the x-axis, okay, year one, two, three, four, and five. And on the y-axis, we have amount in tons of solid waste. So a city council meeting is planned to discuss the possible reasons for the trend shown in the graph. Okay, so if you kind of look at, okay, what's the trend shown in the graph? So over years, looks like it's increasing. So Patricia, a local student, conducts some research of her own. She finds graphical data supporting the idea that the change in the city's population over the past five years has caused the change in the amount of solid waste ending up in landfill. So she plans to represent her findings to the city council. Which of the following graphs most likely represents Patricia's data? Okay, so look at these four choices in graphs. Um, pause it, kind of look at the story again, look at this main graph again, and see what you think. All right, so the graph of the city's production of solid waste shows that it has increased, right? Increased each of the um, past five years. So it has also been increasing more 
with each passing year. So with each passing year, you can see that it's increased a little bit more than the previous year. So if Patricia's graph, okay, one of these, suggests that this type of increase is caused by the city's growing population, okay, then the graph of the city's population over the past five years should also have these properties, right? So the graph that Patricia came up with should show the population of the city increasing and the population should be increasing more each year, okay? So if we look at our answer choices here, she's got the years along the axis, axis x-axis again, and then on the y-axis, she has the population um, of that city, okay? So if she is saying that the population of the city is increasing, and if we just take a glance at these graphs, there's only one um, that stands out to me. Um, this one shows over the years the population decreasing, okay? This one shows it increasing and then decreasing. This one's kind of steady, so the only one that actually increases each year and increases more each year is D. All right, so we're going to go with D. All right, number five, last practice question. Whoop, whoop. The following maps show the severity of droughts across the U.S. in September of 2007 and the locations of wildfires in the U.S. throughout that same year, okay? So we've got the drought severity right here and the significant wildfires right here. So what conclusion can be made by comparing these two maps? Okay, so pause it, take a look at the drought severity and the significant wildfires maps and look at your answer choices and see what you think. All right, so when predicting the risk of wildfires in a certain area, the following should be taken into account. So the proportion of plant material that is dead compared to which is moist and green, the amount of human activity in the area, the wind speeds and directions, and how dry conditions are in the area. So accumulation of dead plant material high winds, and dry conditions all increase the risk of fire. So humans can set off fires under these conditions with matches, um, even cigarettes, or just a car or other vehicles. So the chance of wildfires increase as drought increases. Look at the locations of all of this, okay? So the chance of wildfires increase as drought increases. Drought, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of rain. It's very dry, okay? And the plants and other burnable materials, they just become drier. So in 2007, costly wildfires raged um, in California. So we are going to go with A. All right, y'all, after fully mastering this topic, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, one last experiment or model to explain all of this to your teacher and let them know that you know what you're talking about. Congrats, guys. You did it. You finished all the videos. I'm so proud of you. So go back, review your notes, and study up. Good luck.